Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gin Sense. Hope that you've been doing well. Today, let's talk about fragrances that you can wear in pretty much any situation. No brainer fragrances, jack of all trades, Swiss army knife, whatever you wanna call them. That type of fragrance that you're headed out the door and you can just grab it, spray it and go and not really think about, is this gonna work? Now, of course it could be super easy to do this list and just fill it up with nothing but all blue fragrances. And I did put a few blue fragrances in here, but I included a bunch of other scents that are not your typical blues. All of them are going to be linked down here in the description. Feel free to check them out down there. Let's get started. We're kicking things off with Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme. Now this one is basically a forgotten fragrance at this point, I feel like. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana pays no attention to it. I mean, we had Intenso, that flanker come out, and after that, crickets, nothing. But light blue, light blue gets a new fragrance every single year. Sorry, buddy, it's not fair out there. It's it's hard for a G, and by G, I mean Gabbana Pour Homme fragrance. That doesn't really work, does it? So like I said, this one just about forgotten nowadays, but still works year round. It is going to appeal more to guys that are probably like middle-aged and older. Uh, teenagers, I don't think are gonna really dig this one, but it's nice, it's classy, it's easy to wear, and it's one that, like I said, nobody nowadays is really pulling off. So this one has citrus, lavender, sage, tobacco, and tonka, some of the notes in the fragrance, and I think it's one that is woefully overlooked nowadays for a lot of people out there. This can be a great day-to-day -day fragrance. And for what it's worth, Intenso, I used to wear that to the office all the time. Next one is really obvious, so I wanna go ahead and get it out of the way. It's Explore from Mont Blanc. So this is good old Explorer smelling kinda like Creed's Aventus, and since Creed Aventus can be worn anywhere, anytime, so can this one. Pretty good price point on this from discounters. Isn't gonna cost you all that much money. Nice compliment puller as well. Actually, one of my more complimented fragrances of the year last year. And even though it gets talked about, uh, decent amount. It's actually not quite as popular as you might expect because this is not, in the US at least, a top 30 bestseller. I'm not saying it doesn't sell at all, but I am saying it's maybe not as common as you may think. It's got a nice freshness, fresh spiciness, uh, citrus in there smelling really pleasant off the top. You know, again, big compliment puller, modern woodiness as it dries down. So explore this one, of course, all day, every day. After that one, I want to talk about 212 Men from Carolina Herrera. That's a big old bottle. It's crazy to me, but this fragrance has been out now for a long time. And there are a bunch of flankers in this line and the 212 VIP line, though nowadays most people think of Carolina Herrera as the bad boy fragrance line. Well, fragrance house, what am I saying fragrance line? It's pretty crazy. This has been out for a long time. It came out around the uh, turn of the century, like 1999, I believe. So yeah, it's been out for a minute. There are a lot of 212 flankers, 212 VIP flankers, though nowadays most people think of Caroline Herrera as the bad boy fragrance house, at least for men's fragrances. So this is a really cool mixture of uh, things going on. You've got some spices in here, green notes, you've got citrus. So it's uh, one of those scents that has a good amount of sweetness, but then also freshness in here off the top. You got ginger, citrus, you have musk as it dries down. It's a scent that you can wear easily out at night or during the day. Uh, a lot of people kind of think of 212 in general as like a clubbing type of a scent line, both 212 and 212 VIP, but really you can use this about any time. And this is one of those fragrances that used to be much, much bigger, more people wearing it, but nowadays not so many. So it's kind of a little bit under the radar, uh, less common nowadays. After that, Dylan Blue. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put some blue fragrances in here and Dylan Blue is one of them. Pretty good price from discounters, cheaper than Bleu de Chanel, cheaper than Sauvage, cheaper than Y, but gets the job done pretty much just the same. Really nice open on this one. Uh, really most everything we're talking about today has a good opening, but uh, it's got a really pleasant opening. Citrus in there, of course, and then as it dries down, get a little incense that comes out, makes it suitable for cool weather as well as warm weather. So this is one that I have recommended uh, a number of times over the years. If you're looking for a blue fragrance that has year-round usability, that can pull compliments, that's from a brand that everyone's going to know, but you don't want to spend as much. Maybe you don't have as much money to throw at a, you know, a blue dish 
Chanel or a Sauvage Eau de Parfum or whatever. Interestingly, this one kind of sitting alone. You know, Versace hasn't come out with any Dylan Blue flankers. I figured they would eventually, but uh, so far nothing. So we'll see if maybe we get something new this year. But Dylan Blue, absolutely easy going, no brainer fragrance. Switch things up a little bit. Gentleman Society up next from Givenchy, the newest in the gentleman line. Well, I guess not newest now because they have a new society coming out, but it's not out just yet as of when I'm filming. So this has a solid dose of vanilla in there, cardamom as well, narcissus, vetiver. So it has a uh, kind of an aromatic sweetness off the top, really clean, a little bit of like a, a zinginess to it, like an effervescence to it. I think it's really nice, super easy to wear. Daytime, nighttime, office, doesn't really matter, even though it does have a good amount of sweetness. The one thing with this is it doesn't really have uh, that iris that the other gentleman fragrances have that really, you know, was what the fragrance line was known for. You can maybe smell this and get a tinge of what smells like, you know, a little, little spritz of iris on the edges of the fragrance, but it's no longer anything right there at the forefront. And really that could just be, you know, the narcissus that's in here with the sweetness of the fragrance making you think, oh, maybe is there is there a touch of that iris in there? I don't know. I, I want there to be, so I'm gonna fool myself into thinking there is. It's a great year round fragrance though. Really appealing, great versatility with this one. Aqua de Jo Parfum up next. And this, uh, you know, kind of similar to Dylan Blue in the way that I approach it. And by that, I mean, it has a nice fresh opening. It's very easy going. This one has uh, citrus in there. It's got that aquatic cleanliness. As it dries down, that incense is there like in Dylan Blue, which is gonna help open it up a little bit in cooler weather. Now, again, don't take that as me saying these smell similar. They don't. Just saying, you know, they open with this citrus and freshness and then dry down with incense being one of the more prominent things that you can pick up. Technically with this one, I think it's all of Anim is the note in the base, but still that's how it's gonna come across. Now, of course, uh, Profumo, which is what this is replacing, also had that uh, same vibe as this, uh, but there was a little more, a little more incense, a little more push in that one toward that direction as compared to the Parfum. So this is not the exact same as Profumo, but it will essentially do the same job. And I wanna take this moment to once again complain about <laughs> refillable bottles, specifically with Armani and how much leakage they have. Everybody write to Armani, tell them to fix this. Armani, if you're watching this, come on guys. So um, this one, this fragrance I bought brand new from Macy's and uh, it has had issues with leakage right from the get-go. And uh, it's underneath the collar. It will start leaking after you spray a few sprays of the stuff. The new Armani codes do that. Uh, actually, a lot of fragrances coming out nowadays that are using refillable bottles do that. So these refillable bottles, they seem like such a good idea, right? Oh, it's good for the environment. And you, you can just buy the refillable thing, put it in, save a little money after you use your bottle. Yeah, except for the fact that half of it leaks out and you don't even get to use it. So now I'm having to buy the replacement because it all leaked out. So it's actually not better for me because I'm using the fragrance a lot quicker because it's just spilling all over the place or evaporating. So refillable bottles, thanks, such a great idea. Can you get rid of them? Coach Green up next. Now I'm not the biggest fan myself of Coach Green, but I know a lot of people out there really enjoy this one and it does give you a different kind of uh, flair for an everyday fragrance as compared to uh, maybe a Dylan Blue. So the thing that people really like about this one is kiwi. That's one of the main notes in here. You get that right off the top. So a different kind of opening, very bright, very fresh, lively. You also have a little citrus, you got rosemary in there. So a little herbaceousness and woods in the dry down as well. This one at full retail, I would tell you probably don't want to do that. Uh, I think that it's overpriced at full retail versus what you could get for that same dollar amount. But this one is starting to pop up at discounters and at discounters, I say go for it. But if you are patient, the price should drop further and further. Coach fragrance is typically quite affordable from discounters. So if you can get this for like, you know, 35 bucks or something down the road, I think that's really gonna be the sweet spot. Low DC Pour Ohm Vetiver up next. Once again, from discounters for a good price, that's what you wanna get this one for. I mean, that goes for fragrances in general, doesn't it? But there are some where you think, oh, I'll pay full retail for that, no problemo. Uh, this one, I think if you can scoop it up for, you know, under 50 bucks, then that's where you wanna be. And this is what it says, vetiver. Very clean vetiver, very, very clean. You don't have that smoky aspect, earthy aspect. It's been 
scrubbed quite a bit. Very zingy as well. Kind of a gingery, uh, vetiver, fresh type of scent. Really good for the office. Really good for daytime use in general. You got a little green touch to this one also. And uh, what it smells like, if you boil it down, um, kind of a simplified uh, version of this, but it smells like taking low DC and Dior Ohm Sport and just kind of popping them together. So it's kind of in that wheelhouse, in that style. I really like it. Think that it's super, super easy to pull off. And a lot of people that are afraid of vetiver, this could be a good jumping off point. Something different, Nordic Fougere from Dunhill. Uh, this one you can find for, I think about $55 online. This whole signature collection, every time I talk about them, really good. When you factor in how cheap these are now at discounters and the quality of the scents. Nordic Fougere is another one kind of like Dolce & Gabbana over here that's going to appeal probably more to the guys in their 30s and up, I would say. It has kind of a, like the liquid icy aftershave and you pop that on your on your cheeks after you shave. <laughs> it's got kind of a little bit of that going on. So it's very brisk, refreshing, uh, but then does stay in that Fougere realm, which it's in the name. Again, the quality for the price point is awesome. You should absolutely know about this entire line, even if you don't go for this one, uh, because they cover with this line all kinds of different scents, especially some bangers. <laughs> almost lost my voice for fall and winter time. And at that like $50, $55 price point that they're going for a lot of places, it's kind of crazy. Okay, uh, Bleu de Chanel. I told you, I told you I put a, a few little blue fragrances in here, a very obvious ones, Bleu de Chanel. I do think that when you put Sauvage, Bleu de Chanel, and Y up against each other, uh, that Bleu de Chanel comes out as the most versatile. Now, that's not to say Sauvage is not versatile or Y is not versatile. They both are, and realistically, you can wear those whenever you want. It's just when I smell them side by side, Bleu de Chanel comes out, you know, kind of like the classier one of the bunch, but it's still not so classy that you couldn't wear it casually, extremely easily also. So Bleu de Chanel, I think, uh, as far as the blue fragrance hierarchy goes, is probably the most versatile. Because if you were to ask me, okay, man, uh, Bleu de Chanel, Eau de Parfum, or Eau de Toilette, or Sauvage Eau de Toilette, or Why Eau de Parfum, which one should I wear to a wedding? I'd be like, well, go for the Bleu de Chanel. Which one should I wear to a more formal occasion or a black tie event or business event? I'd be like, well, Bleu de Chanel. Like maybe Why Eau de Parfum is sweeter and might pull more compliments for you, or Sauvage Eau de Toilette is stronger and is gonna reach out and touch more people, but Bleu de Chanel is probably the classiest. Loma de All, Platine Privé, up next, kind of like Loma de All Cologne, reincarnated. Which I've kind of chuckled about a couple times, but I do think it's so funny that, you know, they haven't discontinued many fragrances from the Loma de All line. Cologne and Sport, pretty much, uh, it seems like the ones that are hardest to find nowadays, which Sport and Cologne both were the cheapest at discounters. Huh, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. No, of course not. But it is funny to me that Loma de All Cologne got, and then uh, they come out with Loma de All Platine Privé, and you smell it, and you go, um, you realize that this smells like the one that you already discontinued, right? Okay, cool. Because yeah, it smells like cologne. A little different, but like cologne. Kind of like Aqua de Jo Parfum smells like Aqua de Jo Perfumo. A little different, yes, but still you can tell, right? That's what's going on here. Citrus, almond, little vetiver in there. It's extremely classy, very easy to wear. The citrus smells great. It's a, it's an awesome fragrance. But I will say the same thing about Lomadie All Cologne, so of course, yeah. Last but not least, Azaro Chrome Eau de Parfum, which uh, some people say, or have found a similarity to rather, uh, Aqua de Jo Profundo Lights. Green Mandarin, Lavender, and Pine are the official notes in this one, a really simple note breakdown. Uh, it also has sort of an aquatic freshness to it, really clean. Touch of sweetness, really it's that type of fragrance that you can wear anytime, anyplace, and you're gonna be able to get by just fine. I think the quality is good, and you can sometimes find it at a very nice price from discounters. And uh, Chrome Extreme also is a really solid choice, and that one is close to Profundo. So there we go, 12 fragrances, no-brainer fragrances. Uh, by and large, you can spray these on and go anywhere, and they're gonna work. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.